All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an hourly forecast using the Weather Underground API. Other APIs will, may be similar. If they use an XML, you may have a JSON file that you have to uh, parse as well, but this is an XML. And make sure you have watched this tutorial I did a while back on parsing XML using Weather Underground. We have to add an additional parameter to our URL. In this video, I did conditions and forecast 10 day. What we want to add is you have two options. I'm going to do this hourly parameter. There's a couple of them that you can get here, as you can see. Um, in the this tutorial I did back here, I did conditions and forecast 10 day. And that will be this one and this one, but now hourly. So we want to add that to that URL, the same URL we have back inside of here. Now also what we can get, we can get the hourly forecast. You can get whatever you want really, but I got time, I'm pulling the icon, and then I'm getting the temperature that's predicted to be during that particular time. Now as I create this tutorial, things may be a little bit different what we see here versus what we see here, but uh, for the most part it should match up. All right, and then also what we can do inside of here is we can change these icons. I'm touching these little arrows here. And that's because we are pulling various versions of icons. Icon set one, I call this version A. Icon set two, version B. Icon set three, C. Hopefully you get the idea. And it goes all the way to the letter K, I believe. Yeah, K. All right, so let's go ahead and look and see how to get started with this. Again, make sure that you have watched my tutorial here on how to set up the Weather Underground API. And some of the same stuff I'm going to show you here is going to be using this video, backslashes and things like that. So here is the XML file. Now what you want to do, I've got a component. This will be shared on KLWP Toots on the Play Store. Underneath Globals, I have two globals. I have the version, and all version is is a list I'm going to set that to version A for right now just to make everything, uh, no, actually I'm going to set it to, uh, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's just various versions, and that's those ones that I have back here. And as you can see, version A is what we see right there at least. If I change this to version K, let's see what happens there. All right, that's going to be, now it's not matching right now, but I guarantee you if I save this, I go back to the home screen, give it a second to load up. Yes, it is the same one. It's loading that sun icon because the forecast is sunny, I reckon. All right. So back in KLWP, we got those two things, the URL, uh, that's a text global, and copy and paste your URL. Now, I'm not showing this to you up here because it's showing my API key, but really it's just that same thing that I covered back here in this video. All right. And make sure you include hourly. So inside of that XML file, we have various parameters, um, the conditions, the forecast, the hourly. Well, we want to go to the hourly one. So inside of here, I'm going to close my current observation. I'm going to close my forecast. What I want is hourly forecast, okay? So to get to that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this first one and show you how to get these various pieces inside of here. So... Uh, this is probably getting ready to change because I guarantee this is going to jump up to 11 o'clock right here pretty soon and uh, these temperatures may change, but it's all right. I, I can save this, I can refresh it, and we'll go back to it. How do we get the time? Well, to get the time, uh, I covered this pretty similar to the other tutorial I did. However, inside of here, inside of this XML file, we want to jump to hourly forecast, and a quick way to do that is do a double backslash hourly forecast. Inside of there, I do a single backslash because inside of hourly forecast, what we have, the child nodes, if you're familiar with the term child nodes, these are the child nodes of this uh, tag right here, the first pieces inside of it. Like FCT time is not a child node of hourly forecast, if that makes any sense, but the forecast are. So right underneath hourly forecast, I want to go to forecast one, and then I want to navigate straight to civil. So I'm going to go to forecast one. A recent tutorial I did on JavaScript where I was using some XML and JavaScript and, tax, and Tasker, I got a little tongue twisted. XMLs start indexing at one. JavaScript starts indexing at zero. So I had to use indexes of zero to start off my pieces in that recent tutorial because that's the way JavaScript indexes stuff. However, XML, straight up XML, forecast one is going to be the first forecast that you see right here inside of hourly forecast. So once I'm inside of here, I want to navigate straight to wherever I see civil. 
and civil is going to be this one right here and as you can see it does show 10 a.m. probably if I refresh this in a few minutes it will show 11 a.m. because the time is 10.01 but that's neither here nor there now if I try to do a single backslash I think this is important for you to understand a single backslash forecast one single backslash civil it's not going to show anything because civil is not directly in underneath forecast if I do a single backslash, I'm going to have to navigate to FCT time and then a single backslash, I navigate to civil like that, I can get the same thing. So be careful. When you want to skip over some tags, use a double backslash. If you want to navigate precisely, use single backslashes. But by navigating precisely, you're going to have to go, you know, hourly forecast slash forecast one slash FCT time slash civil or like I did uh, originally, I just had double backslash. So that's a pretty cool feature to do the double backslashes to get straight to what you want. So that's how we get that. How do we get the icon? So I added an image. All of this stuff is inside of a vertical stack group. And let me take away a few pieces because this is where we're going to be able to change our versions. All right, so I'm going to delete a few things right to there. Now what that's doing is going hourly forecast slash forecast one, double backslash icon URL. Well, the reason why I'm doing double backslash is once I go to hourly forecast, I'm inside of forecast one, I wanna jump straight to icon URL. That's the only time that's gonna be used. So it's gonna pull that URL. Now, every single one of these icon URLs are gonna do a version K. And if you recall, there were multiple versions, um, A through K, back here at the Weather Underground API or the Weather Underground doc documentation website. So what we want to do, we want to find this K and we want to replace it with something. You may say, okay, well, what if we have more Ks in this URL? Good news. The only other time a K will show up in this URL, unless they change it at Weather Underground, is going to be if the condition is unknown. Otherwise, there will not be a K anywhere in this URL, granted they don't change it. So what we want to do is we want to search for that K and we can replace it. So that's going to be some regex, TC reg, <coughs> excuse me. What do we want to search for? We want to search for K and I'm going to replace it right now with ABC. And what you're going to notice is that that K that was there now has an ABC in it. Well, obviously, I don't want to replace it with ABC. I want to replace it with GV version. And keep that out of quotes. I think if you put this inside of quotes, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to actually replace it with the words GV version. But by us having a global variable linked to that, it's going to replace it with whatever our global variable is. And I recall I did have it set to K, but if we can, we can change through this, we can cycle through these different versions in our list global, which will change our icons. Some of these icons, as I probably did mention in this tutorial back here, they're not the prettiest. I recommend keeping them small, or by all means, please include your own icons from uh, some weather components that you may have. All right, so with all that done, now, again, if, you have, if you're trying to incorporate your own icons, it's going to require more coding. I'm not going to address that in this video. But, like I said, TC Reg, if we do all this stuff, the only time it's going to see a K is right there, and it's going to replace it with whatever GV version is. If the condition of unknown shows up, which I don't think I've ever seen that since I've been using Weather Underground, then yes, it will be a little bit different. Um, it, it, I don't know what's going to happen there. If you run into that issue, leave a comment and I'll try to address that in a future tutorial. But I have not had problems with this since I've been using it. All right, so we got that done. That's how we get the icon. I'm going to show you how to get these other ones. And something to go ahead and point out, notice I've been using Forecast 1. All we're really going to have to do is go to Forecast 2, Forecast 3, Forecast 4, and each one's going to be an additional hour. That's the only thing we're really going to have to go and change once we copy this stuff and create a new stack group right beside it. That's all I really did. So backing out of here, let's go ahead and get the temp. Now the temp, lucky for us, we can do hourly forecast, forecast one, double backslash English. Now hourly forecast, forecast one, notice I am inside of forecast one. And if I go to double backslash English, it's gonna pull this temperature here and it is showing 19. So everything's still refreshed, but I guarantee you that's gonna change right here in a minute. 
Now notice there are other English tags in here. If we want to get to other English tag or yeah, the other English tags, we have to actually take away the double backslash and navigate to a particular one. For example, if I want to get this English of nine, I have to go to do point inside of forecast one. So notice single backslash slash English like that. So look, hourly forecast backslash forecast one backslash do point backslash English. It's going to get that one there. And we can do something uh, pretty similar for, for wind speeds or what have you. But since I want the temp, I can just do a double backslash. To my knowledge, a double backslash is going to navigate to the first time it sees English, which is the 19 that we have right there. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to back out of this. That's everything that I have inside of this vertically centered stack group. If I go over here to the 11 a.m. one, which is going to be the second one, all I have to do is change all of these pieces. Copy and paste that entire group that we created back here. Copy and paste it and change everything to a 2. So instead of forecast 1, we got forecast 2. Now what you may notice in this tutorial so far is that all of these icons are the same uh, for right now. Because I guess the, the forecast for the whole day is sunny. Now let's see if we can navigate down to a different forecast and see if we can find something where it's not sunny. Or something where it's nighttime or whatever. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit different. Because uh, it's a night clear. That's something cool about Weather Underground. It will pull the moon images as well using the icon URL. So I'm going to close out of a couple of these. Let me see if I can get to one where it's going to be night. Okay, here's a night clear. So which forecast am I inside of? I'm just going to change this right here to show you that we can pull these uh, various things. And this is going to change to a night clear. So it's probably going to be a moon right here in a second. Well, this is forecast one, forecast two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I'm inside of forecast 12. Forecast 12. Well, let's see if we change all this stuff to forecast 12. What is it going to show? Forecast 12 is going to show 9 p.m. We'll check it out. Civil inside of forecast 12 is 9 p.m. Oops, I didn't save it. I'm going to do that. So forecast 12. Let me check that. Now, I guarantee you once I close out of this, this stuff's going to change, but it's, it's going to be all right for right now. Let me go to image. Let's change this image to forecast 12. Notice it does say night clear, so it is pulling that icon URL right there. And it's doing the regex on it. All right, let me save that. And let's go and get the temp. So all I have to change here is to forecast 12. It's saying it's going to be 20. Is that matching? Perfect. All right. So if I save this and go back to the home screen, we should have a moon that loads up here momentarily. Boom, as you can see. All right. Now, things are different here because uh, notice it says 10 p.m. But remember, I did change all these to forecast 12. So I did want you to understand, yes, we can change these things quickly once we create one group. And then we can just copy and paste to get the rest of our hours. Each forecast, forecast one, forecast two, forecast three, is going to be an additional hour. And as you can see, it did update to 11 a.m. So if I refresh this page here, and I go back to forecast one, hourly forecast, forecast one, let's see if the time, look, see civil under forecast one, civil is now 11. Uh, what's the temp? 22. Okay, this says 23. There is a little bit of discrepancy there. Um, it may be dealing with my location or something like that. It might not be pulling the same zip code. But nonetheless, as you can see, it is still uh, updating as it should. I hope that makes sense there. Now, some other things to consider out of all of this. Well, how do we change through our versions? How do we change through our versions? Um, I got some buttons. And really, I've covered this quite a few times in various tutorials, but I'm going to do it again anyway. Uh, inside of this stack group up here at the top, I have the Weather Underground logo. They do prefer you to show their logo if you're using their if you are using their information. So you know, I'm just doing what I'm told. And I'm going to go to this font icon right here, uh, this Chevron right. If I go over to Touch, I'm toggling Global Switch, and all I'm doing is tog toggling Version, and I'm going to the next value. So that's what's going to allow us to cycle through these pieces here. Hang on one second.
Alexa, stop. We had some ice here this weekend, and um, I got ice all over my windshield, so I'm letting the car warm up. Sorry about that. And then if we come back to this other icon, all I'm doing there, uh, this button here, touch, toggle global switch, version, and we're doing previous value. So that's going to let you toggle through those various versions. So I'm going to say this, go back to the home screen, and we are going to see this one be a little bit different because I did change that inside of the code. But if I go through here now, I'm clicking on these buttons, and sometimes it may take a second for it to load up. Like right now, it's loading one up because I haven't gone this far through the versions. But boom, there's, there's another version. And all this really is are the icons getting pulled from here. So you have to give it a second to load up. Um, if you haven't loaded them. But now if I go backwards, these have already loaded. So as you can see, those are showing just fine. And then this question I do get asked sometimes, how do you uh, force an update onto your, whether it be your web gets or weather in general? Inside of, I think I just have it, yeah, right here. I want to get to that little refresh icon. So font icon, CW, I have it positioned up here. I go to touch, it's a custom action. And uh, the custom action, Custom action is force RSS slash text slash XML. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to get that XML update. Um, I think that is about it. I did show you how to navigate through it. That double backslashes versus single backslashes. I showed you that if we did change an icon, clearly that does not look right in this sequence, but I did want to show you how we can navigate through forecast one, forecast two, forecast three, however far you want to go. You can even incorporate more of these pieces if you wish. As you can see, there's tons of things in the API, the XML file. And there you have it. That's how you can create an hourly forecast using Weather Underground. And that is it for this video. I hope it helped.